Welcome. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo, President of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for joining us on Cube 57. Our guest is Gerald Smith. He's one of our Houston legends, and he's here to tell us a little bit about what he does and why the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has identified him and celebrates him as one of our Houston legends. Gerald Smith, thanks for being with us. Laura, it's my pleasure. Well, thank you so much. I know how busy you are. You're such an important part of our city. We're so very proud of you, the many accomplishments and all that you've done and given back to Houston uh, as a really important part of our economy and the work that you do. Tell the folks who are watching who may not know who Gerald Smith is, tell us what you do first and then we'll talk about you know how you got there well thank you well um, I'm in the investment management business I run an investment management firm that manages close to seven billion in assets for uh, institutional investors across the country well, and no small feat. I know I just recently saw the Houston Business Journal rankings, and you're right up there with all of the best in Houston. Well, thank you. And thank I know you. you come up with a very interesting story, Gerald. You know, we've had the great fortune of sitting together and, and learning one another's story, many things that we have in common, including what I like to believe is a, a tribute to our parents. Absolutely. You know, the upbringing that you had, uh, your entry level positions that you had here in the Houston area. So talk to folks who may be watching and say, well, you know, he grew up with a silver, you know, spoon in his oh, mouth. Just it's the opposite. It's been opposite. So tell, tell me first, remind me, your parents did what, Joe? Well, my mom and dad were actually divorced when I was a young kid. Okay. So I was actually raised by my mom and my grandmother. Okay. I grew up here in Houston in yes. Third Ward, Texas. Yes. Um, went to uh, Texas Southern University, yeah. graduated Jack Yates High School as yes. well. Yes. And um, quite honestly, Laura started off my career uh, working at Foley's department store. I remember store. in retail. Yep. Now, see, if you're watching, you understand why he's such a sharp dresser. And you moved up the ranks within Foley's. I did. I did. I started working at Foley's when I was, what, 16? Uh -huh. And started off wrapping China. Okay. I, I was a China wrapper. All right. I went there during the holiday season to get a job in sales. Yes. And um, unfortunately, uh, while I didn't get a job in sales, mm -hmm. They did hire me to wrap China. Okay. And did you I ever break you, any of the China? Uh, I know. I, I, I did break a few pieces two? in the beginning, but I'll tell you this quick story. So yes. I went on the interview. I had on my coat and tie, my only suit yes. at the time, and um, thought I was really going to get this job. Went down to the fifth floor at Foley's in the main department store, which is no longer there now, which is well, Hill Corp is now, okay. uh, which was at 1100 Main Street, mm -hmm. um, and uh, put on an apron. Everybody was laughing at me because they said, ah, this young kid thought he was going to get a sales job. He's back here wrapping China. <laughs> and, uh, but I decided then that if I got to wrap China, I got to be the best China wrapper I can be. Good attitude. And, uh, Good attitude. From there, went into sales and uh, worked at Foley's all the way through high school and through college. Uh -huh. And by the time I graduated from college, I actually had two offers from Foley's, uh -huh. one in merchandising as a buyer yes. and the other one in personnel. So I was made an executive even before I graduated from college. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was very fortunate. Yeah. Well, as I like to say to our emerging leaders and others, take care of the job you have and the next one will find you. And it absolutely. doesn't matter what your absolutely. job is, that be is the best correct. at it. So tell me the role and the influence that your the two women in your life play, which are your mother oh, and wow. your grandmother, and, and some of the lessons that you've taken as, a, as an adult. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, my grandmother was an entrepreneur. And so she really was the one that played a pivotal role, if you will, for me when I was coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was uh, nine years old, she taught me the difference between debits and credits. And uh, the fact that she had her own business mm -hmm. uh, back in the 50s and 60s says a lot for Pioneer. you know an African-American woman yes. uh, at that time. Yes. And so I, I guess it was always in my blood in the sense to know that in the end, I wanted to do something for myself. Yes. Uh, but uh, she played a major role in that, and my mom as well, uh, raising two young kids. Mm -hmm. uh, she worked at a, a pharmacy uh, when I was real young called Buffalo Pharmacy, which is, uh, mm -hmm. used to be in West U right on the corner of Buffalo Speedway and Bissonette. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, from there I went to work for Coca-Cola. But I remember when my mom used to catch the bus at 5 a.m. in the morning mm -hmm. to try, you know, to, to make sure that my brother and I had uh, food, uh, 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 you know, on the table. And uh, it was real important to me to 
uh, being the oldest, that I become somewhat, if you will, the man of the house. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I helped her buy her first car when I was, uh, again, uh, 17 years old, paid half the down payment and uh, paid half the car note. Wow. So, you know, I come from very humble beginnings, if you will, from that yeah. standpoint. And, and we'll come back and talk a little bit about where you are today and also about your children, your grandchildren, sure. uh, the apples of your eye for sure. I hope you're like most grandparents. Absolutely. So we'll be right back to talk about that. Thank you for joining us. We'll be right back. And we're back here on Cube 57. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo, President of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce with Gerald Smith. We're going to continue our story regarding this Houston legend. Gerald, again, I want to thank you on behalf of the Chamber. Anytime I've called upon you or asked you to join us, you make time. I know you're extraordinarily busy with your business, your family, and all of the many things you've engaged with here in the Houston area. But now that you've uh, you know, been doing such great work, I'm sure it's got to be really fulfilling for you to see where you came from, where you are, and certainly again again, in your specific area of business, very few minorities, very few African-Americans that have thrived not only in the city, but in the country. When did you make that decision to leave the executive world that was Foley's and perhaps other opportunities into this space? Well, um, I was very fortunate. After spending a couple of years at Foley's, mm -hmm. I, I was introduced to a young man who was president of an investment banking firm. Mm -hmm. I must admit, uh, at this time, I didn't know what an investment banker was. Um, but I was intrigued by his lifestyle, I must admit. Uh, but once I found out more about that business, um, I decided this is something that I would like to pursue. Mm -hmm. And um, he suggested I started reading the Wall Street Journal and other type of financial books and so forth, and I did. Mm -hmm. And one day I went to him and I said, you know, listen, I like for you to give me an opportunity to come to work for you. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, you have to understand, this was a different time. This was 1975, mm -hmm. okay? There were no people of color, right. no women, mm -hmm. who were really in investment banking. Okay. And so, um, uh, what uh, my friend told me, he says, I think you should start not only interviewing with my firm or his firm, but you should interview with other firms, which I did. I started uh, 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 sending out my resume and I l luckily got interviews, but once they found out I was a person of color, it kind of yeah. changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, really no one would give me an opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I ended up doing is putting together a business plan. Mm -hmm. One of the things I learned, you know, I was a, I was a business major mm -hmm. uh, in school at Texas Southern. Uh, I put together a business plan, and at this time, Black Enterprise Magazine has started putting out what they call their list of uh, the 100 top black businesses in the country. Okay. And um, they had a section on financial services firm. And those firms, which included all the black banks, savings and loans, insurance companies, mm -hmm. all had assets uh, which could be managed. Mm -hmm. uh, the total assets, now to me, this was a lot of money. It was $974 million, not billion, million dollars. And I said, here's you almost, saw that and I you saw thought. almost a billion dollars <laughs> okay. that nobody has, no, that's even here. And I could be that person to go out and assist these people in, in managing part of their portfolios. Uh -huh. So I went to these same firms uh, and one of the firms, which I went back several times to, which uh, I, I told him, here's a business plan. Here's, uh, there's about a billion dollars in assets that I'm sure you knew nothing about or your firm knew nothing about. I said, I could be that person to, to, to uh, go out and uh, help these firms in managing their money. Yes. And uh, I said to him, I said, I think the only reason why you won't hire me, quite honestly, is because I'm black. Mm -hmm. But if it's something else where it makes sense to me that you don't think I can make it, and you give me a valid reason, you never have to hear from me again. Because okay. I knew they were tired of me Coming knocking around. on the door. I, one thing is, I was very persistent. Yes. But I said to him, if I'm right, yeah. is, if the only reason why you won't hire me is because I'm black, I expect for you to give me the opportunity. And he said, okay, you're hired. And that's how I got in the door. 
So I started off uh, um, working with uh, uh, some of these uh, black institutions, but I also called on banks and insurance companies and savings banks in New England. So um, it was a very interesting start. Yes, but it was right. also after that that I realized that after a period of time that if I were going to be in control of my own destiny, my goal was eventually to have my own firm. But having that opportunity yes. created, me, created for me the opportunity to move to New York, work on Wall Street. I was the first African-American to, own a, to have a seat on the New York Futures Exchange yes. back in 1982. Um, I worked for a guy by the name of uh, Nick Brady, who became Secretary of Treasury under Bush 41. Yes. Uh, you know, again, I was uh, there. I was at Dillon Reed uh, Company I went to work for. Uh, Douglas Dillon was the Secretary of Treasury under Kennedy. Wow. And Nick Brady obviously became Secretary uh, under Bush 41. Yes. But very prestigious old firm. But uh, then after a while decided it was time to come back well, to Houston and start and it my sounds own like, you know, Houston's all the better for it. And Absolutely. certainly you've started as a, a role model. And, and I'll ask you a question as we wrap up here mm -hmm. in terms of a legacy for your children and your two grandchildren, the two boys. Mm -hmm. What would you like if you could choose your legacy to be for wow. those young children and grandkids? You know, Laura, one of the things that to me is making sure that we always focus on giving back. One of the things that we've established uh, at uh, Texas Southern, we do have the Center for Entrepreneurship, Entrepreneurship and uh, Innovation. And it's called the Smith Center mm -hmm. for Entrepreneurship and uh, Innovation. And I think that is probably the greatest potential for, for a legacy in order to ensure that others have an opportunity to to uh, become entrepreneurs, to be able to innovate, and to make this city even better than what it is today. Well, that sounds like quite a legacy. Thanks for all that you do. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for joining us here on Cube 57. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo. And again, we want to congratulate our Houston legend, Gerald Smith. We'll see you next time. Thank you.